let's all stand as we sing. <laughs> people said amen you may be seated Whew. good morning to you majesty boy aren't you glad today that you can call him your lord amen. boy if you're in here today and you're saved we are some of the most blessed people we are the most blessed people in the world and we're so glad and honored to have each and every one of you here with us today we do want to take this time to go on to our lord in prayer but before we do just want to mention we do have several that are in our here in our uh, church family that are sick and in the hospitals, and we do ask that you please remember to lift these up. Remember, if you would, our missionary families and the missions work around the world. Remember our military men and women for God's protection and for their families who are back here for their safety. <laughs> remember, of course, our nation. We ask you to pray for our president and his family, our leaders, as well as you would the elections coming up. Remember the church and the ministries here at our church. Also the services this morning and then tonight and on Wednesday night. And then let's pray for each other as we go out this week that God would bless us with an opportunity to share the glorious gospel with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so we're so thankful to all of our mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers. We want to wish you a happy Mother's Day and we're so honored and blessed to have you here with us today. I want to take this time now to invite all of our men who can or able to to please meet me at the altar at this time. We'd like to pray for our service today and for these that we mentioned and also remember our missionaries and our military and then for God to bless the remainder of the services and our pastor to be coming in just a few moments to share what God's laid upon his heart with us today. I've asked Brother Mike Metters if he would to come and to pray for these in our services today, please. Lord Jesus, we thank you once again that we're here in your house to worship you, to give honor to you, because you are worthy. <coughs> Lord, we pray for these services this morning. Lord, we pray for Pastor Collier. Pray that you would just hide him behind the cross this morning, fill him with your spirit, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would tender our hearts so that we, we may hear what you have to say through him. Lord, we pray for our nation. Lord, we are in desperate times, Lord. Nothing surprises you. Lord, you say that uh, you will hear, heal our land, but, Lord, there are conditions to that, Lord. So we pray, Lord, that individually we will look to you. We will turn from our wicked ways and humble, humble ourselves and pray to you, Lord. And, Lord, we pray for a healing spiritually within ourselves, and then you will heal, heal our land. Lord, we do pray for the elections coming up. We especially pray for our men and women in the military, Lord. Pray that you would be with them and keep them safe, especially their families too, Lord, as 
they see peril, not just across the world, but even here in our own lands, Lord. So I pray that you would just keep them safe. Lord, I pray for our elected leaders, that you would give them guidance and wisdom in the affairs of this country. Lord, I pray that you would give us wisdom and guidance in those that we choose at the ballot box in November. We thank you again, Lord, how in spite of our failings that you do bless us. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. Great job on that song. We want to welcome you to our services today. We're so glad and grateful for each and every one of you being here. And we want to especially say thank you to those of you who are our guests. Maybe you're visiting for the first time or the first time in a long time. We're prepared to honor you and give you thanks and just let you know how much we appreciate you being here today. And so if you are our guest and you're not a member here at Parkview and maybe you're not a return 
I guess, but maybe you're here for the first time or the first time in a long time. Remain seated, and we're going to ask our church family and our returning guests to stand in your honor. Our ushers are going to come to where you are with some material from our church. There will be a pen and a visitor's card in that material. Please take time to fill that card out and put in the offering plate in just a few moments so we could have a record of your visit here with us today. We would appreciate that so very much. We hope you'll come back and visit again with us real soon. Of course, we know that uh, you may be here because of Mother's Day, and uh, we thank you for that. At this time, we're gonna ask our church family to give our guests a good part of you welcome. You may be seated. If you'll notice on the screen, let me make the announcements for this week real quick. Remember to be in your place tonight at five o'clock as we continue our study through the book of John with Brother Collier. And that'll begin at five o'clock right here in the auditorium. And then remember this Wednesday night, all the ministries we have, every one of those ministries start at seven o'clock. So please avail yourself of those. And then this Saturday, uh, we'll be having Brotherhood Breakfast. That will be with Coach Glenn Moore. And that'll start at 730. That will be in the Great Hall. And so I want to invite all of our men to come out for that. And then ladies, uh, your upcoming Wings meeting is on Monday. Uh, uh, excuse me, May the 16th, and that'll be at 645 in the Fellowship Hall. It's going to be a special meeting. Tickets are now on sale. I believe they're $5 a piece. You're going to enjoy the movie uh, War Room and uh, have a time of fellowship, and so I hope that you'll make plans to be there for that, and uh, you can see Miss Carol McNamara for uh, tickets about that. All of our moms, would you please stand and let us honor you at this time. Happy Mother's Day. Let's honor all of our moms. You may be seated. On behalf of our pastor and our church staff and church family, we want to honor two uh, special moms today. And then uh, our preacher will be coming to uh, introduce our Mother of the Year uh, recognition. But we want to recognize the oldest mom that's present with us today. The oldest mom that's present with us today. And so if you are 70 years are older and you're a mom, would you please stand 70 years or older and you're a mom? Wow. Just remain standing, remain standing if you would. And as I go through these ages, uh, just be seated if you need to, all right? 75 years and older, 75 years and older, 80 years and older. 80 years and older, 85 years or older, 85 years or older, remain standing, 87 years, 90, 90 years or older, 91, 92, okay, okay. <laughs> Come here, Brother Doug. Come here, Brother Doug. All right. Now, Miss King, when is your birthday? July the 17th. Miss Lee, when is your birthday? So, Miss King is the oldest, correct? That's correct. Give Miss King a hand, if you would. This probably didn't want to hear that. I know. I'm not going to shift the blame to who really is to blame for this, but his initials are Steve Adams, all right? <laughs> I will tell you that. All right, now we want to recognize the mom, and you're just going to raise your hand on this one, okay? Recognize the mom that's here present with us today who still has the oldest mom living, whether she's present with you or not, okay? And so we're going to get those who have, she doesn't have to be here, uh, she can be here, but you're a mother and your mom is still living, okay? If you have a mom and she is still living and she is, whether she's here or not, she's got to at least be 92, 
okay, to win this? Because we know that Miss King and Miss Lee are here. Do we have anybody that has a mom that's still living that's older than 92? She might not be here. Raise your hand real high. Where, raise your hand real high so I can see it. Where? Where is that over here? <coughs> Uncle John, how old's your mom? 102, all right. But he's not a mother. He's not a mother. <laughs> yeah, you got to be a mom, okay? You got to be <laughs> Man, you got to be a mom, okay. And so we have, I guess it's going to be, no, that's, he's not a mom. He's not a mom. See how you messed us up, man? <laughs> All right, okay, we're going we're gonna to go 75, okay? If, if you're, thank you, preacher, come on up here. If your mom is 75, all right, and you're a mother, and you've got a mom that's at least 75, raise your hand. We'll do it that way, all right. 80, she's still living, 80, 82, 85, yes. Okay, 86. 87, your mom, and your mom is still living, <laughs> she's 87, at least 87, right? 88, 89, 90, 91, oh. okay, we have Miss Lene and Miss Benson, right? Okay. When's your mom's birthday? 91 in September. How about your mom? Lene, Miss Lene. All right, give Miss Lene a hand, all right? <laughs> Brother Joey wants Brother Steve to enjoy his last Mother's Day here. Every year we honor a special mom. Uh, we call it simply Mother of the Year. And uh, we, on this plaque, we go back to the year 2007. And uh, this year it's our joy to announce that the Mother of the Year is Mrs. Deborah King. Ah, here she is. Up these steps, Deborah. The ladies have a corsage for you. You're going to make all of them cry, Deborah. There's going to be pictures out in the foyer that you can stop by and see. It's in the west foyer. And you can do that after the service, but this will hang here in our church. And it says, 2016, Deborah King, Mother of the Year. Thank God you. bless you. Thank you all of you. You're welcome. Thank you all. Have a seat right here. And you're going to see some pictures up here. I believe they have the pictures already uh, almost completed. Let's give Miss Deborah another round of honor, all right? We love you, Miss Deborah. This time we're going to have our boys and girls come meet with Preacher. He's going to talk with you and pray with you, and then we'll be heading to Kids Church. getting ready for Children's Church, and we've got some, a Bible question today. Who was the mother of Jesus? Mary. Mary. 
How do you know that? Because it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. All right. Who was a mother that lived in a wall? Ooh. She lived in a wall. No, that's not right. Almost. Her name was Rahab. <laughs> you talk like your daddy. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank You again for our boys and girls. We thank You for our children's ministry, for our workers. And Lord, I pray that today would be a great day in the lives of these boys and girls. Bless their moms and dads and grandparents for having them here today. Bless, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand as we sing the little chorus. I'm so glad I'm part of the family of God. We'll sing it through a time or so and shake hands with those around us. Let everybody know you're glad to see them, all right? I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I'm a part of the Amen. Shake somebody's hand this morning. Oh, let's sing it together. Sing it out this morning. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain. All right, to our members, how many of you have your offering ready? Raise your hand. All right, let me wait a little while longer. I need more than that. All right, good. All right. 
All right. How many of our guests, you have the card filled out? You got that ready to go in the offering plate? Oh, come on, folks. I don't see any hands. All right. Good. Thank you. Be seated for just a minute. I want all of Deborah's family that's here this morning, want you all to stand, please. You're here part of the King family. Just stand up back there. Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good. And uh, we are glad to have back in the service today. I'm looking. Did you get over here, Tony? All right. Tony, stand right there. Tony Mabbitt lives in Germany now. And is back. And that's his wife. Introduce her to us, Tony. Oh, M and M Mars. All right, good, good, good. We're glad you're here. I think, if I remember correctly, she's from the Philippines. What part of the Philippines? Cebu. Cebu. Oh, I was just in Cebu just about hundred years ago. But, uh, <laughs> but I had a joy of preaching there in, in, in Cebu, and Cagayan de Ora was there. Good. God bless you. We're glad to have you. Good. Now we pray for her. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's time to receive our tithes to God and our offerings to Him. Let's be faithful now. Heavenly Father, thank You for every mother that's here today. Thank You, dear Lord, for the sacrifices that they've made for their children, their grandchildren. God, I pray that today that you would just put a special blessing upon every mom and every grandmother that's here today. Father, we pray for the Word of God today as it's preached, that, dear Father, it will find resting place in the heart of every person here. Bless the special music, and then bless your Word in Jesus' name. Amen.
Take your Bibles this morning to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 1. Had a call early this morning, and my son Wynn, he called and he said, Dad, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm having breakfast. And he said, by yourself? I said, yeah, by myself. He said, I just wanted to hear your voice today. Isn't that good? He said, you know, it's two years, our second Mother's Day without Mom being here. I said, in essence, you just wanted to make sure I still was. (laughs) He laughed. Mother's Day is a special time. I enjoy Mother's Day. I know when our children were small and Mother's Day was coming around, I'd always give them some money so that they could pick out a Mother's Day present for Virginia. I called uh, Jason and Wynn last week and I said, I want you to give the kids... And I told them how much each, give them money. And I said, I, I want them to be able to go out and buy mom something for Mother's Day. And <coughs> Wynn said, Dad, you used to do that for us. I said, yeah. And I figure you're not doing it for the boys, so <laughs> I guess I'll have to. But uh, I enjoy Mother's Day. I want to... I want to speak for just a few minutes. Let let me say this. Are y'all enjoying the 10 o'clock hour? I I, I really am. The only problem is, I felt about half backslidden getting to the restaurant at 11.30. (laughs) I thought, dear Lord, somebody sees me, he's going to think I hadn't been in church today. They don't usually see me till about 1 o'clock. And um, so I'm able to to go out and eat a little earlier. But I'm enjoying this. And I think it's going to be a great blessing uh, for our church. But I want to preach this morning for just a few moments on four mothers that are out of place. Four mothers that are out of place. Now, this may seem like a strange title for a Mother's Day message because we want to talk about mothers in a good light. Today, And I'm going to do that. But the four mothers that I'm going to talk about in Scripture, they're out of place. In our text, we have four mothers that are mentioned. We have Gentiles and we have Jews. I want you to notice here in Matthew chapter 1, And I want to start in verse number 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now, there are two books in the New Testament that give us genealogies of Jesus. One is here in Matthew chapter 1, the other is in Luke chapter 3. Here in Luke chapter 1, we have the genealogy of Christ going all the way back to the patriarch Abraham. That ties Jesus in with the Jews. In Luke chapter 3, we have the genealogy of Christ that goes all the way back to Adam. That ties Him in to the entire human race. And so here today, we're going to talk from Matthew chapter 1. Verse 2. Abraham begat Isaac. Now, do y'all know what the word begat means? That means that he was the daddy of. Don't you wish that sometimes that maybe they had put that in the Bible? Abraham was the daddy or the father of Isaac, but other than that, they, he begat him. Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob begat Judas or Judah and his brethren. That's the twelve sons of Jacob. And Judas or Judah begat Pharaohs and Zerah of Tamar. And Pharaoh begat Ezram, and Ezram begat Aram. Aram begat Amenadab, and Amenadab begat Naasen, and Naasen begat Salmon. 
Salmon beget Boaz, or Boaz of Rahab, or Rahab. And Boaz beget Obed of Ruth, and Obed beget Jesse. Jesse beget David the king, and David the king beget Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Drop down to verse 16. And Jacob beget Joseph the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. These ladies that we're going to talk about today are out of place because they are mentioned in the genealogical record of the Lord Jesus. I don't know if you have noticed this or not in your Bible reading and Bible study, but very few women are ever mentioned in genealogy. It is the father who begets and the father who begets. But here the Lord mentions these different ladies that they were part of the lineage, the life of the Lord Jesus. This world has never seen a mother that did not need to be born again. I'm going to say that again. The world has never seen a mother that did not need to be born again. You say, but what about Mary, the mother of Jesus? She was a sinner saved by grace, just like you and I are sinners saved by grace. The only perfect human being that has ever lived is the Lord Jesus Christ. The only one who has ever lived without sin is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 You know, when you and I say the word all, uh, we sometimes don't mean all. For instance, I may, I may say to Brother Doug, I, I'm going to come over to your house and I'm going to spend all day with you. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to show up at midnight tonight and stay with him until midnight tomorrow night. That usually means I'm going to come over and spend a while with you. But when the Bible uses the word all, it means all. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The glory of God is Jesus Christ. Acts 17, the Bible says that God hath appointed a day in the which He will judge the world by that man whom He hath revealed by the resurrection of the dead. So the Bible says that God has the standard, and that standard is Jesus Christ. And you and I, when we measure ourselves by someone else, we may measure up pretty good. But all oh, when we measure ourselves by the perfection of Jesus Christ, we come up falling way short. Every mother that has ever been born needs to experience the new birth. As precious as mothers are, they cannot become or they cannot fulfill all that God desires for them to be as a mother and as a wife until they come into a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. She needs and must have the correct spiritual relationship with the Lord in order to do what God intends for her to do. When you stop and think about it, the plan for the family originated with God. And if the family originated with God, then in order for us to have the right kind of family, then we need to have Jesus Christ as a center, Jesus Christ as the heart of it. As I mentioned to you a few moments ago, Luke and Matthew, give us these two genealogies, one again tying him to the Jews, the other tying him to the entire world. The Bible does things like this, giving us a parallel and a comparison. He does that with the four Gospels. You read the four Gospels, in particular Matthew, Mark, and Luke, 
and you'll find that they are what we call synoptic gospels. They are synonyms of each other. They tell the same story. Almost it's like verbatim that Matthew and Mark and Luke gives us the life of Christ. The Gospel of John is particular. When you read the Gospel of Matthew, keep in mind, Matthew, this tax collector, this Matthew, that was a wealthy man who traveled in the upper crust of society of his day. He wrote Jesus Christ and from his vantage point, he presents Jesus Christ as King. You come to the Gospel of Mark. Mark was a servant. He was not of the upper crust and Mark presents him as a servant. Luke, who was a physician, presents the fact that Jesus, God, was a man. But all oh, when you come to John, God chose John, that disciple whom He loved. He chose John to pin the reality that this man, Jesus, is God. He is the incarnate Son of the living God. No other child has ever been born like Him. No other child has ever lived like Him. No other man has ever died like Him. And thank God, no other man ever rose again from the dead like Him because He is God. Matthew begins with Jesus and he connects him back to King David and this connects him to the throne of Israel. Now why are these four mothers listed? Why not women like Sarah and Rebecca and Rachel? Why not these great ladies that stand out? Could it be that our Heavenly Father is showing us again the wonderful reality of His grace. I'm not for sure, uh, folk today, if many of us really understand the magnitude of the grace of God. That we recognize the importance of the grace of God. The greatness of the grace of God. Paul in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, he said, For by grace are ye saved through faith. So oftentimes, and, and it's, it is important, but so oftentimes, I think maybe we think more on faith than we do on grace. Did you know if we did not experience and know and have available to us the grace of God, all the faith in all the world wouldn't help you. Because apart from the grace of God, salvation would not even be available to us. And so for by grace, God's unmerited favor to us. I don't know how many times over the years I've spoken with people about knowing Christ as their Savior. In particular, men will say, you know, Preacher, I've just been too wicked. I've just done so many things in my life that I, I just don't believe God could forgive me. No, let me tell you something, fellas. Man may not forgive you. God will. Man may not accept you back. God always will. Why? Because He's a God of grace. The Bible talks about that He is the God of grace. He gives grace, listen to me very carefully, He gives grace to those of us who don't deserve it. He gives grace. You know why I know that? Because none of us deserve it. None of us will ever be able to stand in God's presence and say, boy, you know, you did a good thing when you saved me. I was a great catch. No, listen, fully we're going to understand when we stand before Him and we're going to say, oh God, the only reason I'm here is because of the grace of God, the love of God, the grace of Christ, the love of Christ, and what He did for me. 
I love again what the songwriter said, Should I at the gates of heaven appear? To answer the challenge, what claim hast thou here? What hast thou to offer, yea, what is thy plea? My blessed assurance, my answer will be, All that I have is Jesus. The grace of God. And these women that are mentioned here are here to show us the grace of God. I want you to notice in verse number 3. And Judas, or Judah, beget Pharisees and Zerah, twins, of Thamar or Tamar. And Perez beget Ezram, and Ezram beget Aram. This takes us back to Genesis chapter 38. In Genesis chapter 38, you find this widow Tamar, and you find her deceiving her father-in-law Judah, And he comes in and he lays with her. And out of that union comes these twins. And we find here then, and I believe with all my heart that Genesis 38 is one of the bleakest, blackest chapters in all the Bible. Judah, the godly lion, committing adultery with his daughter-in-law. Twins again are born to this wicked act. And, but they're all mentioned in the genealogy of our Savior. Here was Tamar, an adulteress, but the Lord in His grace saved her. I love Luke 19.10. The Bible says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. I like that word that the Scripture uses, Brother Joy, when it says that those that have never experienced a new birth in their life, they're lost. Lost. Have you ever been lost? Most men have. We just don't admit it. That'd be a good place for you ladies to say amen right there. But I tell you, that, that's, a, that's a terrible feeling to be lost. But you know, in a car now with GPS, we can usually find our way out if you know how to put it into your GPS. But back in the spiritual realm, the only GPS we have is the Bible. And the Bible says that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Many times, people are lost, but they don't know it. That's why Jesus came. Now watch this. To seek those who were lost. He came looking for those who were lost. We weren't looking for Him. He came looking for us. Or you think about it, those of us here today that know Christ as our Savior, I want you to think with me as I go back in my mind, and you can go back in your mind to that day when Christ found you. And by the way, can, can I be very honest with you? You did not come to Christ. He came to you. Brother Steve sings one of... of uh, Squire Parsons' song, He came to me when I saw that I could not go to where He was. He came to me. That day as a 19-year-old young man, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit came and convicted me that I was lost and on my way to a Christless eternity. And that day I surrendered. I yielded. I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. But He had to find me. He found me sitting in the choir of the Temple Baptist Church in Garland, Texas. I was not an adulterer. But I'll tell you what, I was just as much a sinner as Tamar was. But boy, when you recognize Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost, and Tamar is part in the genealogy of Christ to reveal that Christ came to save the unsaved. He came to find those which were lost. Drop down to verse number 5. 
And Salmon beget Boaz of Rechab, and Boaz beget Obed of Ruth. Here we find two Gentile ladies. One was Rahab. Rahab lived in the city of Jericho. Jericho is the first city when the children of Israel crossed over into the promised land after the 40 years of wilderness wanderings and they passed over that land. And I always love when I talk about the taking of Jericho. Joshua. Now you have to understand, Moses has been the only leader that the children of Israel have known. Now Moses has passed off the scene. Joshua now is the new leader. He is an accomplished military man. They don't know about his statesman ability. His political power. The night before they're to cross over, Brother Doug, old Joshua gets outside the camp by himself. And he begins to pray, Lord, how do you want us to take this city? How should I put the armies about? Should I go around and encompass the whole city? How do you want me to do it? And all of a sudden, he hears a rustling over there in the bushes. He immediately op- drags out his sword. And he said, Hey, are you for us or against us? This angel of God said, I am the captain of the host of the Lord. I've often said... The captain of the host of the Lord is an Old Testament picture and type and presentation of Jesus Christ. Jesus, what He said to Joshua, He said, I didn't come here to take sides. I came to take over. I'm going to tell you how to take the city. March around it seven times. One time every day. And keep your mouth shut. Don't talk. That's why, you know, I know Baptists were not in existence then. They had to march around that thing being quiet. Seventh day, they marched around it seven times. At the end, the trumpet sounded. Everybody shouted and the walls of Jericho fell down. There was a lady, though, that lived there in those walls. Now, it's hard for you and me to imagine living inside a wall. Uh, Tony, there are some cities, uh, ancient cities in Germany, where they still have dwelling places inside the walls. Those walls were humongously thick, and people lived inside of them. Rahab lived inside the wall. Most Bible teachers believe that she also was a harlot. Rahab saw these two spies coming in. Somehow, she had heard how the God of the Israelites had vanquished the enemies of Israel in front of them. And she invited those uh, uh, messengers, those men to come in. And they came in, and they came looking for them. The men of Jericho came looking for them. And, And she said, oh, they went another way. And she saved those two spies, those two messengers. Those messengers said, listen, you take a scarlet rope, you hang it out your window, and said, when we have the victory, when we see that red string, that red rope, we're going to spare everybody that's in your house. Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas in that Philippian jail. They were in their stocks and bonds. <laughs> that sounds terrible, doesn't it? Stocks and bonds will keep you bound down, that's for sure. But anyway... They began to sing about midnight. I think I mentioned this a few weeks ago, but I was in a conference preaching some years ago, and a man was up there preaching before me, and he said, boy, at midnight they began to sing, Amazing Grace, how sweet to sound. I thought, John Newton hadn't even been born yet to write that song. (laughs) They began to sing. Earthquake came. Their stocks, their chains fell off of them. The jailer came in and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? He said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. He said, 
Jailer, if you'll, be, if you'll trust in Christ with all your heart, you can be saved. And if your family will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they can be saved also. That's what he was telling them. Y'all get in the house. Y'all believe like Rahab. Then we'll save you inside that house. I love why... You ever wonder, Rusty, why he called it a red rope, a red string? Oh, listen... Remember what he told them in Egypt? When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. When that death angel comes through and you've put that uh, blood on the doorpost and on the mantle, when he sees the blood, he'll pass over you. That red stood for the blood. It's the blood of Christ still today that cleanses us from our sins, folks. It's the blood of Christ that was shed on Calvary. That still saves us. And Rahab became a Gentile believer. And look here. She makes it all the way into the genealogy of Christ. But then notice also, And Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. And so now Ruth gives birth to Obed. And Obed beget Jesse, the father of David. And here's Ruth, this Moabitess, who now stands in the Lineage of Christ. Listen to Deuteronomy 23. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation. Shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever? Ruth was not allowed as a Moabite, was not allowed to be a part of Israel. But what happened to her? She had a kinsman redeemer by the name of Boaz. And Boaz purchased her, and she was made a part of the lineage of Christ. Let me tell you something. You and I, I don't care who we are, at one time in our life, we were outside the life of Christ. We were outside of our relationship with Christ. And God found us. And God reached down in His mercy and grace. He saved us. And you know what He did? Even though I was not a part of the family, He birthed me into the family. He made me a part of the family of God. We were guilty. We were condemned before God without hope. But the Lord Jesus, our kinsman redeemer, came and purchased our life, paid our debt of sin. And as the Bible says, became a curse for us. But then drop down, if you would, to verse 6. I've got to hurry. And Jesse begat David the king, and David begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Do you know who Solomon's mother was? It was Bathsheba. Bathsheba, this woman that David had taken and committed illicit sin with and then had her husband murdered and then that baby died. God is the God of a second chance. God is the God of beginning over again. God is the one who says, If you'll come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I'm meek and lowly in heart. But you've got to come to Him. In your life today, wherever you are in your walk with God, wherever you are not in your walk with God, there's not anyone here that does not have, I believe, a desire to be close to God, not to be away from Him. But you've got to make decisions to come to Him. David, in Psalm 51, David cries out to the Lord for forgiveness for his sin with Bathsheba. He says, O God, renew unto me the joy of thy salvation. It's amazing when you really realize that if the sinner is saved without works, which they were and which we are, then you are not kept by your works. If works can't save you, works can't keep you saved. Grace 
saves us. Grace keeps us. It's the gift of God. And then I want you to notice in verse 16 very quickly. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. She was a good lady, a special lady, but not a perfect lady, and not a sinless lady. Mary stood in need of the grace of God and God's salvation, just like every one of us today. The best need Him as much as the worst need Him. I heard a story some years ago, and I went and looked it up. And it was exactly as it was told to me. A young singer, his mother was dying. He was going over to her house and he passed the little church that she had attended for many years. And he heard them singing an old, old song. I'm going to ask Brother Jerry to come to the piano. And I want to not sing to you, but I want to read to you this little song as he plays it. Tell mother I'll be there in answer to her prayer. This message, blessed Savior, to her bear. Tell mother I'll be there, heaven's joys with her to share. Yes, tell my darling mother I'll be there. When I was but a little child, how well I recollect how I would grieve my mother with my folly and neglect. And now that she has gone to heaven, I miss her tender care. O oh, Savior, tell my mother I'll be there. When I became a prodigal and left the old roof tree, she almost broke her loving heart in mourning after me. And day and night she prayed to God to keep me in His care. O oh, Savior, Tell my mother, I'll be there. Tell mother, I'll be there in answer to her prayer. This message, blessed Savior to her bear. Tell mother, I'll be there. Heaven's joy with her to share. Yes, tell my darling mother, I'll be there. Yesterday as I was finishing up getting ready to preach the message today, I got to thinking about my own mother. This young man could not get away from that song, Tell Mother I'll Be There. And I'll be there in answer to her prayer. Tell my darling mother I'll be there. What about you? I'll count it up, Brother Steve. My mom died when I was 27 years old. My mom has been in heaven now for 49 years. For 49 Mother's Days, I've had to celebrate with you as you celebrated your mothers. But I could also celebrate my mom because my mom is in heaven. And I want the blessed Savior to tell her again afresh and anew today. Tell my mom I'll be there. In answer to her prayer, I'll be there. 
I remember when Wynn was born and we began to celebrate Mother's Day for Virginia. And every year, I mean, I'd go all out, I'd buy her flowers, and I'd take Wynn in his bassinet when he was first born, and I would take him to buy a present for his mother. He had no idea of what he was doing. But I had an idea that he was going to honor his mother. When Vonda came, we did the same thing. Took both of them and we'd go shopping. As they got older, every week of Mother's Day, I would take them aside out of her hearing. And I would give them money. And I'd say, now I'm going to take you shopping. And when they got their license and all, they would go shopping themselves. But I would give them money to go and buy their mother something for Mother's Day. A week or so ago, I called Jason, my son-in-law, and Wynn, my son, and I said, I want you to give the kids a certain amount of money. Wynn said to me, he said, Dad, I remember that. That before Mother's Day, you'd always give us money so we could buy Mom a present. And you know, they acted like that was their money. And I was thrilled that they did. You know why? Because it was their money. I gave it to them. But it was theirs. One of these days, there's going to be a great reunion in heaven. One of these days, moms are going to rise up when their babies make it into heaven. I hope you'll be there. I hope that honestly, Today, you can say from the depths of your heart, Blessed Savior, tell my mother, I'll be there. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. I wonder how many this morning, out of thankfulness to the Lamb of God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus, you can say, Preacher, I can say from the depths of my being, I'm going to be with mom one day in heaven. And I rejoice in that. Would you just lift that hand across the building? I know that today, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know that. God bless you. I wonder you're here this morning. You could not raise your hand. I do so appreciate your honesty. But you'd say, preacher, I don't have that deep settled peace. And I wish that you would remember me today to God in prayer. I'm not going to embarrass you, folk. I want to pray for you. Would by uplift of hand, you'd say, Pastor, I don't have that peace. But I want to be there with Mom. And I wish you'd pray for me today. Would you just lift your hand till I see it and then slip it down. I'll know what you mean. Pastor, would you pray for me? God bless you. Thank you. Would you pray for me? I want to make sure that I'll see my mom in heaven. Would you just lift that hand across the building? Not asking you to join our church. Not asking you to unjoin wherever you go. We're asking you to know today that you have peace in your heart that you'll be with Jesus and with mom one day. All across the building. Would there be others? Preacher, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Father, we do thank You for these who now have asked us to pray for them. And Lord, we do that. I pray that today would be the day that they take that step of faith and they come and let us take the Bible and show them today how they can know Christ as their Savior. Maybe you're here today God's spoken to your heart about becoming a part of our Parkview family. Why don't you do that today? Why don't you make that decision for Christ today? Maybe you're here, you've been saved and never scripturally baptized by immersion since you were saved. Why don't you make that decision today? Let's stand together, please. Heavenly Father, I again pray for these who raise their hands. May they put a foot to their prayers. And God, today, may they come 
And may today be the great day of salvation for them. Lord, for others who need to rededicate themselves to You, O Lord, may they do that. Other decisions that need to be made, O God, may each of us make those now. Our heads are bowed, eyes are closed. As Brother Jerry leads us in the hymn of invitation, would you come right now? I surrender.